drawback except that it would be fun to try the shoe without it in there just to see what the uh, see what it feels like under Is it time to celebrate everyone? Let me know, are you a Mizuno running shoe fan? We finally took a Mizuno running shoe to 50 miles. It's been a process with Mizuno, but guess what? They're making steps in the right direction, 100% with this shoe. The Mizuno Re Wave Rebellion, there it is over on the screen. Let me just turn the scale on as we wait here in a second. I'm excited actually. All right, full testing. We t it and it got to 50 miles in four or five. Now I am running high volume right now, but in four or five days, we were able to get it there. Let's dive in a neutral. Ooh. That is the first time I'm doing the twist test. Neutral road running shoe. I'm gonna say a, a goose or two. A goose or two for that twist test. Twisting actually more than I expected, uh, especially because of that wave plate there through the midsole. Looking at an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe, 36 in the heel, 28 in the forefoot for a medium to high stack height, all right, through that midsole. Uh, women size eight, men size nine. On your screen, I believe we're looking at about 7.7, 7.8, yeah, in my size. Let's just drop it over into grams for everybody else around the world. 221, 222 grams, at least on this scale. There's the score, all right, a single layered engineered mesh for that upper. And let's go semi-gusseted tongue, 100%. Pretty stout. Mm -mm. Tank time. It's tank time without a ton of extra overlay. So, so, I mean, they really must have engineered the inside of that heel counter. That's the back of the shoe right here, okay? Which creates an incredible heel pocket. And absolutely no slipping through that heel pocket. Stout, strong, but not overbuilt. Okay, sometimes you get a heel counter that's just like a ton of plastic and it just uh, adds a lot to the weight of the shoe. And I gotta say, that weight, um, I should have made more point on the weight. That's pretty impressive. It's just about, at least, uh, you know, based on, I just had to hop into the archive. It's about 0.2 or 0.3 ounces heavier than the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. Just so you are aware. Okay, what else on that? Oh yeah, not... I mean, okay, the tongue maybe could be a little shorter. All right, you can kind of see it there. It's a little big there at the top of the tongue, but not too much uh, loosey-goosey extra uh, material through the eyelet chain. I am in breathable, very breathable upper. I'm excited about this upper, everybody. All right, there is my score for the upper and the lockdown. All right, midsole, we're looking at Mizuno Energy Light. All right, it's a Piba. Uh, which is a, pot. let me get you the actual name here. It's a polyether block amide, which that P-E-B-A midsole material. And it is the lightest and bounciest uh, uh, midsole from Mizuno ever. Okay, what they're calling their Mizuno Energy Light. However, I only struggled just a little bit. I was yearning for taking the shoe out without the wave plate. So Mizuno is known for putting these wave plates in their midsoles. It's kind of been their classic thing to do for who knows how long. And you can actually see it there through the outsole. Okay, the bottom right there. We'll come back to that in a minute. But I just wanted, it, it creates a little bit of a firm landing, a little bit of a uh, stiff ride, all right? Not quite as fluid through the foot strike. 
And so I'm excited, Mizuno. Very excited about the, the advancement in the midsole foam. But I, I must say, I want to try this shoe without the plate. And But I know like that's what you're known for. So it's kind of like a, a give and take. And it would, I think, reduce the weight of the shoe just a little bit if that wave plate was not in the midsole. Just an idea for you. So I would say that the ride and energy return would have been like an 8.25 or 8.5 if that plate wasn't in there. Just, uh, I wasn't feeling like a ton of pop because of the plate. I was feeling the, the nice energy ride because of the midsole foam, all right? There you go, overall score for that midsole. Now, moving on to the outsole, wow. Almost like nubs on the bottom and a full, um, let's see, a decoupled groove there from the heel, like a really aggressive decoupled groove. <laughs> I'm trying to, I mean, it's just, I don't think I've seen a decoupled groove with so much. Now, is it creating the trampoline effect like you experience in the Nova Blast 2? Not yet. And again, maybe it's because of that wave plate getting in the way a little bit, but I am very, very excited, Mizuno, about this outsole. Like, first of all, high build quality, uh, a maybe a little too much rubber on the outsole for my liking. You know, if you cut a little bit of it, especially in the midfoot, you'd save a little bit of weight. But as far as durability, like, it's it's built again like a tank on the outsole. So, oh man, man, and it's almost reminding me of the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro outsole, because just because it's kind of like these little nubs. And anyway, overall, pretty excited there about that out. So moving on to the fit, true to size, no issues, standard fit, uh, felt perfect, you know, just fine, you know, yeah, perfect, fine, no issues at all as far as being too wide or too narrow through the toe box, nor the midfoot, nor the heel. Comfort score, a little bit lower. Again, getting back to that wave plate, it just uh, wasn't as soft as I might like for the Foot strike, positives and drawbacks. Positive is definitely the new Piba uh, midsole in this Energy Light, okay, from Mizuno. Definitely durability, or sorry, drawback. Hard to choose, I guess it's the wave. I just, I'm not gonna say the, the wave plate is the drawback, except that it would be fun to try the shoe without it in there, just to see what the uh, see what it feels like underfoot. Durability, oh man, great score. I probably could have just said six or 700 miles. Again, Hi Mizuno and Asics are really the two companies that I look to for high build quality. I'm trying to think who else is really challenging them. I just, let me know in the comments, like who else is La Sportiva and the trail scene, like just like really almost overbuilt shoes. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Mizuno, great, great job there. If you want a shoe that's gonna last you for four months, five months, six months, you know, seven months, depending on how much you are running. Okay, moving on to uh, how will I use this shoe? Definitely a daily trainer, pretty solid long run option, but it's light enough that if you need to pick up the pace in a fart lick or maybe a, a tempo day to a certain extent, I think you could do that as well. Price point, oh boy, $180. Now you gotta compete Mizuno with Saucony in the Endorphin Speed 2 lineup, which is right about 160, all right, I do believe. In fact, let's do it right now. Other shoes to buy on your screen. Okay, I'm putting the, I'm, <laughs> I wanna put this shoe, it's not an Endorphin Speed. All right, I'm not, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna confuse anyone. It doesn't feel quite like that, but it's trying. So $180 is just a little too pricey for me, which is why the score was so low. All right, soak it in. Um, yeah, Endorphin Speed 2 is what it's kind of reminiscent of thus far. Oh, uh, shoe quick specs for the Mizuno Wave Rebellion. Soak it in, eight millimeter drop. All right, upper single layered engineered mesh. We got that rubber on the outsole and $180. Full review score. Standard, right, straight down the middle, 7.5 out of 10. If the price comes down, that score goes up, okay? So overall, pretty good. Didn't, you know, it's not 7.8 or 7.9 or, you know, not in the eights, but it's moving in the right direction. I mean, I'd say a great step forward for 
Mizuno. Great job, Mizuno. I'm excited. Okay, let's stick it over there. Comment of the day, question of the day. We're pulling this comment of the day from the last Mizuno shoe that I tested last spring, which had a relegation. It did not make it. Let's get the soccer whistle out. It didn't even make it to 20 miles. Okay, so whenever I relegate a shoe, it means it's going to it's going to the archive. Um, so here we go. Shout out to Luke Sherwin, and I think I was asking about like how do you watch the blog? So I always like to get some insights as to how people are watching as they're multitasking. And sure enough, here we go, Luke. Thank you, Luke, for being a member of the channel. He says I watch while I'm cooking breakfast. Recently upgraded my setup with a phone stand and a portable Bose speaker. Had trouble hearing my phone even at full volume when my kettle was boiling or my eggs were frying. But the speaker makes me able to hear the vlog clearly. Luke, I love that insight. Like cooking breakfast, get the phone stand, get a Bose speaker, let's crank it up a little bit. Luke, thank you for the comment from, gosh, four or five months ago. Okay, question of the day. Since it's the uh, almost, yeah, the weekend uh, publishing, you know, right around the weekend time, I was just thinking, where is, I'm just ready to relax on the weekend. Where is the most relaxing place you've ever been? Oh, I cannot wait to hear your answer. Like, whether it's a location, whether it's like somewhere in your house, whether it's like a, you know, a travel spot, whether it's a camping spot, whether it's who knows where. It could be a building that you, I don't, who knows. So that's the question of the day. It's kind of a random one, but let's go there. Mm, all right, we will toss it to, um, we'll toss it to, oh boy. Oh man, I'm putting myself on the spot here. We'll toss it to the, you know, just the, the running shoe review playlist. Running, in case you're a little behind on running shoe reviews, you can get, you know, like the mock, or sorry, the Rincon 3 published last week, Metaspeed Edge published last week, so it'll be right there, right there, right there. All right, everyone, onward and upward. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.